Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Westeros Total War here today on the channel. We're back on the World of Ice and Fire sub mod. We're playing as Stannis the Manus. We are playing as House Baratheon here today. We have a massive battle. It's make or break. King Stannis has attacked King Tywin Lannister at Harren Hall. And this is make or break. This will decide the futures of the houses of Baratheon and Lannister. Which one will probably fall into disaster and ruin like the Targaryens? Okay guys, welcome to the fields of Harrenhal. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so most of my army is made up of Baratheon swords and pikes and longbows. We do have access to some uh, crown men-at-arms and cell swords as well. In the last couple of episodes, we've managed to take King's Landing, the Crown Lands, and now we're starting to push into the Riverlands. And we're going to continue to go against the Lannisters. But as we start to border Stark territory in and around the Riverlands, let me know in the comments, should I go to war with the Starks or should I potentially ally with them? We've allied with the Martells and the Tyrells. They've bent the knee with Marjorie Tyrell marrying my nephew, Edric. The Arons are neutral, but the Greyjoys and the Starks want to declare their independence and call themselves kings. As I'm pushing through the Riverlands, oh yeah, I might go to war with the Starks. Let me know what you think. Alright, let's take this high ground here, because they do slightly outnumber me, so you never know, they might actually charge out. So we'll take the high ground, the safer and more strategical position. But if you haven't already, guys, leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on, let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions for the series. I'd really much appreciate it, and it also gives me some feedback as to whether you guys want to see more of this A World and Ice and Fire sub-mod for Westeros Total War. The largest map, and in my opinion, the best mod for a Game of Thrones Medieval 2. So here's some more chosen swords here, and then we have our... Cavalry further up here. So what's this first army that's dragged out the the garrison from Harren Hall? It's kind of cool and realistic that Tywin would hold and make his operations at Harren Hall because he spends so long there in the books. But an army has been attacked on the outskirts, and they can't. Well, he can't allow an army to not. Be left alone. So we'll send up the Baratheon cavalry now to engage those three units and start a small little skirmish. But here is the main Lannister force. Look how fantastic these guys look. The red cloaks there. And these are the best of what House Lannister has to offer. It's going to be a glorious battle here. But yeah, we need to win this one. <laughs> it's always a gamble. Because the recruitment is so harsh on this mod. So we'll hit those crossbow here. Destroy them. We might try and swing around. Oh, they've actually got Riverland cons conscripts in their army, which is interesting. Because as you take territory in this mod throughout Westeros, you actually get the ability to recruit units from those unique locations. Which is kind of cool, it's realistic. Like in DEI. We started in the Stormlands with Renly's forces. We've also got, within our castles, the heavier Baratheon Stannis variant. We've moved into the Crown Lands, and now we get access to the Pool of Crown Land units. But the cavalry, even though there's only about 50 of them or so, maybe closer to 60, we seem to be running down these weaker units. But I want to sort of plan ahead for this series. If you want to see more campaigns, leave me know in the comments. And if you see someone, if you see someone comment, say hey. I want to see a Lannister campaign or an Aaron campaign. Uh, go thumbs up that comment as well. Because I like to sort of go with the general consensus. Oh no, I've just... Oh my god. 
I gave everyone an attack order there. That's so annoying. <clears throat> anyway, it's probably, we're probably looking like we have to move up anyway. Because they're taking their time. It is slightly raining. So fatigue might be a little bit of an issue. Moving through the wet, cold wind. Rain and wind. But we should be alright. We'll take a decent position there. Nice, clear ground away from those trees. The tree line. My archers are starting to clip those. We'll get them to hold as Stannis can charge in and have his first taste of battle in quite some time. His general's bodyguard. Only half the enemy force remains. Are engaging that small uh, spear unit. Okay, so now we've probably it's time to press the attack. swung the numbers for both sides to be even with that small little skirmish and they do get a slight morale debuff because we did kill a general as well so reform your position along with your archers as well army builds wise they, we've got like three units of chosen swords, we've got some cell swords as well they probably have better heavier units but we've got the longbow and cavalry the battle is very so. much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, it's going to be a close one here today. They're starting to move up as well. Quickly, men, reform the line. They're starting to make their way up here now, though. Let's try and match the width of their army moving up. How about that as well? Alright, here they come. Let's have a look at them. So the first wave of sellsword pikemen are moving up. The red cloak crossbows in the second. Further on the flanks we've got the red cloak sergeants. That's what I really fear in this build. But it looks like both Stannis and Tywin have made use of the sellsword recruitment pool. And here are the red cloak swordsmen on par to our chosen Baratheon swordsmen. But if not some of the best swordsmen in the game, they are going to really give us a hard time. How fantastic do those units look, particularly for medieval too? So it looks like they're going to close the distance as our archers are in range. We have skirmish of supremacy, so they want to try and close the distance of us. Okay, so it looks like they're swinging their Westall and Outriders here. We'll allow the Baratheon cavalry to engage and tie them down. So we're, we've got them exactly where we want. They actually have cavalry supremacy. There's a big charge coming down the center. Hold! Chosen swords and the Baratheon pikes they're trying to push back those red sergeants that are now pushing. Yeah, so the Lannisters do have cavalry supremacy over us. They have four to our two. But we should have the archers on them. Get your shots off, men. Pick your targets. We've lost 5% to their 19. So that initial charge is not working out well. This pike should be able to hold back as well.
but destroying that first little force. Probably was like 8% of the main. It's going to be a close one here today. Even if we do throw back the tide of Lannisters, we're going to have to replenish and repair our army at Harrenhal. Maybe just redirect some of those targets with my archers. Old men of oh, the line. 9 to 27. So we've got the tick rate on our side. If it gets down to a few men, we should be the last one standing. Looks like Tywin himself and his red cloak lancers were trying to cycle charge the front line now that they've. and now they have uh, pulled back. Alright, we're holding for now, and we're trading quite well. Just a couple of those guys are sitting idly by. I think we've held them enough that this is going to be a, a disadvantage if we don't push on an attack, so... We'll give out attack orders now to go. Still really too close for my liking. Fifteen percent to their forty two. a little bit too far up but some of their units now are in a retreat they're trying to cycle charge as well but we should be able to hold them try and pin them down from the sides Half the enemy force remains.
The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. All right, let's end that one there. Clear victory. So Stannis deployed 2,354. They are the casualty sustains and inflicted. And we've managed to get rid of Tywin. So we can execute him. We can ransom him for 12,000. We are going to execute him, of course. I wonder who's the new king of the Westerlands. But we should be able to march upon Harren Hall now with impunity. Wish they'd never been born, Sack the Citadel. <laughs> An order. And we're going to have to wait here for some time. Oh, Harrow's yes, Way has been attacked. Some of Tywin's army has fled back there. Two to one. We won't order resolve that one because that one might be a little bit harsh on us. Sweet. We've taken Harrenhal. Okay, so we'll continue to try and finish off the territory and the crown lands. Brindlewood is under siege by Sir Davos and Olard Seaworth, his son. Yeah, I guess there's a couple more Lannister forces there. Eastwood. We kind of just got baited westward. Just due to the Lannisters' military forces. We'll allow Sir Davos to continue to go and give chase. And we'll push to Rook's Rest as well, try and siege that out. Okay. Stannis is now pushed to Willowwood. Or he's sieging it out. And Gregor Clegane, the mountain, is inside. Edric's moving into the Riverlands now. Along with Axel Florent. Uh, not the biggest army. Why isn't he the best commander either? Anyway, with the death of Sandor, I don't mind adding another Clegane to the dog pile, as it were. Let's replenish and repair where we can. Yeah, look at this man. He's like max command. His dreads moving up as well. Still only two daughters, though. Same with Edric. I'd love a male Baratheon if we can get one. Hail my king. Your will, sire. Okay. So we probably can move Stannis out of sire. Willow Wood now. Probably leave the cell swords behind. I thought the cell swords would be better than Order. Crownland militia, but I guess men at arms, I guess not. We'll put a watchtower there. Nothing shall escape your notice in these lands, my lord. Captain we Ralph is going to be intercepted. Them, Ralph. That rent. Oh, okay. Hail, my lord. So Davos should be able to take Rook's Crest now. Hail, my king. We're just my sort lord. of... Wendell Mandalay's trespassing. Alright. Yeah, we're just sort of mopping up the last of the Crownland forces here. There doesn't even seem to be many notable characters defending these cities. Right, let's move to Harrenhal because we're going to continue potentially into the Riverlands. Right, let's take the settlement now. Lydon. Lewis Lydon, I guess. Victory. Not entirely sure who, who he is. Nothing I can't remember him in the books. Sire. Okay, guys, I've skipped a little bit ahead. 25 hey, turns into the king. Let's Play now. After taking most of the Crown Lands and now the Riverlands, I've rallied everyone up and I've reforged our armies. So we have five now. Edric... So Davos, Axel, Stannis, and Alice de Florent all have armies. Now, we've rallied up in Harrenhal because we're going to declare war upon the Starks. Um, as look at like it, as we go north, they've taken Harrow's Way and they've also got River Run and, and further territory to the east. Um, they're still allies with the Boltons for now, but 
We're getting into Stark territory. Now, I could just ignore it and go against the Lannisters, but I think opening up a two-pronged attack is probably the play. Just to make it a little bit harder. Let's have a war on two fronts. So, we'll send Edric's a Baratheon. No, he said Storm. He's a Baratheon now. To Darry. Stannis can hit Great John Umber and the army in Harrow's way. Oh, and Brendan Tully's there. Oh, that'd be a devastating blow for the Northern Tully Coalition. Well, we'll hit John Umber. And war has been declared now. Stannis of House Baratheon. And House Stark. We'll see Jad Harrow's way. I just think if we were to focus on the Lannisters, then come all the way back through the Riverlands, this map is so big, we're basically just wasting movement points. And if he still wants to call himself King in the North, we can't allow that. So we'll allow Sir Davos and Stannis to push together. Axel can push into Darry, along with um, Edric, and we'll put Alistair there to the north. But that's where we're going to be ending the episode here, and continue on. We'll have the massive war against the Starks in the next, but we'll just get rid of Brynden Tully here, the Blackfish. Not killed by Lannisters, but by Baratheons in this alternative timeline. Salt pans as well. We do need to take. But we'll try and get Stannis to head to River Run. It's just the Riverlands at the moment is split in half between House Lannister and House Stark. They've both been trading settlements back and forth. We'll take Darry now. Although there's a large army inside, there's no notable generals, so we'll auto resolve this one. Clear victory. We fought that type of siege battle uh, before. Got some new ships at Driftmark, Royal Carracks. They're quite expensive, they cost 350 upkeep. Although we got rewarded them, I don't want to pay for them. We're rallying some forces down in the southern stormlands with Estamont. He's mobilizing troops from Greenstone from the and the Weeping. Build another watchtower here as well. And we'll continue westward into River Run. Okay. Edric is gonna push up to salt pans. And we'll allow Stannis to attack Stonehenge. 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 Henge is in real life. Small giant numbers there. House Tyrell negotiating with us as well. Constantly, which is annoying. Okay. Edric. And Axel should be able to take salt pans in the next. The reinforcements have pushed north, but Mark Piper is defending Stone Hedge. And let's have a look at how Westeros is shaping up to end this episode off. So the Lannisters do have some territory there. Silver Hill, former Lannister holding, has fallen to the Tyrells. What else is going on down here? Oh, here we go. Garth Tyrell. Mace Tyrell. And Garth Hightower are fighting Lannisters in Old Oaks. So there's been some skirmishes down near the Crake Hall territory, which is cool. Moore and Tyrell as well is fighting. Uh, the Greyjoys haven't attacked the Westerland coast at all. Stony Steps under Lannister control. Acorn Horns, are, Acorn Halls under Stree Siege, along with Wayfarer's Rest. Yeah, they're just sort of chilling there. They've moved some princesses up to Baneford, though. The Arons are mobilizing on the Salt Pans border. I could give them Salt Pans, but for an alliance, maybe. The Twins are under the control of the Boltons. Have the Starks thrown back any of this... Greyjoy aggression? No. Still lost Winterfell, Torrance Square, Castle Branch has even fallen. And the White Walkers have moved down from the lands of Always Winter, but they're pushed into Then, so 
they're still a little bit of a while away. We will need to eventually send an army to the north, to the wall. Nothing's going over on here, over here in Essos. Greyjoys. Ah, oh, Euron's over there. <laughs> That's funny. So you'd have to move him all the way back if you were to play as the Greyjoys. Oh, that's quite cool. Well, unfortunately, on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching episode 3 of my Westeros Total War campaign on Medieval 2, playing on the World of Ice and Fire mod. So, war has been declared with the Starks now. We're going to continue to try and hunt down the Young Wolf. Don't know, some Lannister is probably claiming, claiming his kingship. Lancel, who knows? <laughs> Who rules because Joffrey, Tommen, Tywin, Devon, Lancel, Tyrion are all dead. But yeah, we're going to continue with our war in the Riverlands. Uh, hopefully, the Tyrells continue to push up into the Westerlands. It's interesting to see what the Arryns are going to do. House Martell's sort of chilling. Uh, but if we can throw back the Starks out of the Riverlands. I don't know if we really need to push too far north because Greyjoys and Boltons are probably going to occupy it. Still, we might have to go to the Iron Islands as well with the fleet, so that might be annoying. We might need to start moving ships all the way over from King's Landing to the other side of Westeros um, because we've got to deal with the Iron Fleet, I guess. But we've got to get rid of the Greyjoys and we need to protect the north... And the wall from the White Walkers. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I'm going to play the outro now. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video. And feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the links. You can support me on Patreon if you want. Channel members members are available. Use creator code SimpsyTotalWar on the Epic Games Store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks. We've got Twitter, Discord, Merchandise, Facebook, Steam Group, Instagram, Twitch and Google Plus links all in the description below as well. But above all guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy. Much love from Australia. Goodbye. <laughs>